Um, well, it's a little sci-fi romantic comedy hybrid, um, where essentially it, the future looks just like it does right now. But they have figured out a way to detect the exact moment that you'll meet your soulmate by implanting a timer device on your wrist. And um, the, the first time you're able to get it is when you hit puberty, but oh. you don't have to get it then. Um, and my character had the timer implanted whenever when she whenever hit puberty, and it's blank, which means either her, her true soulmate love is dead, or um, he just hasn't gotten it implanted yet. So there's a lot of little trials and tribulations she goes through in order to find her one. Um, her best friend is her step stepsister. Stephanie, whose timer I think is set, she's supposed to meet her one like when she's 46 or something, so like, I don't know how many years that is, I think she's turning 30 yeah. in the film. Um, and it's, it, it's with love with a guarantee. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And it, it works by when, it, when you lock eyes with your soulmate, the thing beeps, it just, it goes off. It, it's a, it tells you literally to like the millisecond. So it could be, you know, in two seconds from now, and somehow, some miracle, the love of your life will walk through the door, and you will lock eyes, and the thing will go, will, will beep again, and you know. I want one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I probably did a very poor job explaining that, but... Um, well, your yeah. character, in, so she kind of makes sure that she, since she doesn't, hers isn't working, really. Right? Well, it works. It's, it's just, it's blinking. It's just blank. Yeah. There's no countdown time. Yeah. So she's always on the lookout for guys who either you know, have blank timers or who don't have timers at all and tries to get them to get them implanted so that perhaps, maybe, you know, even if she doesn't necessarily feel like they're the one, maybe they are because yeah. it's supposed to work. Yeah. So she's always on the Brings up all that stuff. All that stuff. Yeah. And she takes on a relationship with a much younger guy that she has a connection with and is just trying to throw caution to the wind. Yeah. And then, you know, everything goes crazy. Well, the thing I like about this film is that it's just, it's its such a fresh and unique take on an age-old story yeah. and the age-old problem, but yeah. it does it in such a way that it's almost kind of believable that there could be such a gadget. Yeah. I think one of her templates was Eternal Sunshine, which mm -hmm. had a similar kind of, I want to say gimmick. I guess it's a gimmick, like mm -hmm. a little a hook. A hook. Yeah. Um, it was grounded with a lot of very sort of believable situations. Um, and I, I bought it. I bought it when I, when I wrote it. <laughs> wow, hello. When I read it. <laughs> oh my god. Um, and we, we had such a great time shooting it. We never really felt like yeah. anything that we did was improbable. Hmm. So, well, um, so I guess it, it always begs the question, would you get a timer if you could, if you could get I've one? I've gone so back and forth with that question. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm married, I'm happy. Um, but even if I wasn't, I don't, I don't know. Part of me would want to. Mm -hmm split personality, the control person, the freak, like, no, I just want to know and just be done with it. But then that would, you know, that would forego any real surprise or adventure, and that's, yeah. I think, half the fun, yeah. half the sadness, too. Yeah. So when you met your husband, was it love at first sight, or? <laughs> it was something at first sight. Yeah. I mean, we were married two months later. Wow. So yeah, was it was like in like or something. Like, what's up with you, yeah. weirdo? It's a fellow weirdo. We're both yeah. weirdos. We're both Aries, and we're both weird. That's great. Yeah, it's great. We're both huge nerds. Huge. Um, and he's hot. It's really, it's unfortunate. He has no idea how good looking he is, <laughs> which makes him even more sort of endearing. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're like, we love sci-fi. That's great. And we're just dorks. It's nice to find somebody that you share a lot of things in common with. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. Now, I guess... Um, this movie's going to be available on demand, which is well. so great, mm -hmm. as well as being in theaters. Yeah. I think that's the future of filmmaking. I think Soderbergh was the first one to do that. Yeah. Pretty sure he was. He got a lot of flack for it. Yeah. But I think he clearly understood how things were going. It's just the way that they're going. It yeah, makes I, sense. I think, I mean, I just came from seeing, you know, Iron Man last night, and it's just this incredible oh, physical... Oh, can't wait to see that! It's this incredible <laughs> physical experience. Oh, so excited. But it's like... I wouldn't want to see it at home. I'd want to see it in the theaters. But there's right. some movies that you really can enjoy right. at home. And this, yeah. this, I think, is one of them because it's yeah. a perfect little snuggle up and watch the movie. Totally. It's not a big, you know, 
special effects event film. Yeah. Which, I, which is why I think those kinds of films will always, I mean, I know the music, the music. Why do I keep, what <laughs> was with the weird Freudian situation that, that, I, that I'm in, which is why the film business, I think, will always do okay, even though they're suffering. Yeah. Everybody's suffering, TV and film. Yeah. So no one really seems to understand how to recoup money, lost internet, yet. Yeah, they will. Um, but there'll always be films like that. There'll always be people who want, like, Avatar, and yeah. your, your Lord of the Rings, your, yeah. your event films. Um, but this is nice for non-event films mm -hmm. as a way to keep them, you know, in the public eye, get people to see them.